In this video, we will add a collider to our terrain so a character can walk, jump and stand on it. In the projects tab, we have the prefabs folder where there is a chunk tilemap prefab. Let's double click it to open it up. And it has a missing script at the bottom. We will be creating this script in this video, so for now let's select three dots and remove this component. As I have mentioned in the first video, for the runtime collider generation, we are going to use tilemap and the tilemap collider 2D. To make this setup even more performant, we are going to also utilize composite collider 2D with the geometry type set to outlines. The benefit of geometry type dot outlines should be that it is the most efficient geometry for generating our collider. There is a downside. Since it generates an outline and not a collider inside the collision shape, we can't really click and drag cast it. We can solve this issue by asking our tile map if it has a tile at the position where we have clicked. Let's start by defining a new script that will use our chunk tilemap prefab to generate a tilemap and the tilemap collider 2D. Let's go to the underscore scripts folder, right click create a new C sharp script, let's call it tilemap collider generator. Let's open it up. We can remove the update and start methods and we are going to define a serialize field. Let's create private tilemap and we are going to call this m underscore tilemap. We need to right click and import the missing references. So we are going to import unity engine dot tilemaps. And this will be the reference to our tilemap where we are going to place tiles so that it can in turn generate our tilemap collider. Now to do that, we need to have a private tile. Let's call it um, m underscore tile. And since we do not want to assign it, we are going to create a wake method. And in here, we are going to create m underscore tile equals, and to generate a tile at runtime, we are going to call scriptable object, create instance of type tile, and this will be an empty tile. To make sure that the collider is correctly generated, let's set m underscore tile dot collider type equals tile dot collider type, and we want to select grid as the type of our collider. This is because we want to generate a collider that is equal to the size of a grid cell, and that's what the grid collider type will do. We could improve this code by passing this tile reference instead of generating one in awake method of each instance of tilemap collider generator, but this is something that you can implement on your own. For now, let's create methods that we create. For now, let's focus on finishing this script. The next method that we need is public void prepare collider and it will take a bool array of arrays and this will be pixel state. This array of arrays will represent if there is a pixel or not, this will be an offset from the, the origin or where the tilemap collider generator object is placed. Let's add here a for loop. We are going to pass here y value and the upper limit will be pixel state dot length, which will be the size of the first array. So the outer one, we need to add another loop for X and this will be going through the inner arrays length, but we want to pass not zero here, but the Y value. So this way we loop for each array nested inside this uh, outer array. And now we can set m underscore tilemap dot set tile to populate our tilemap with the new vector 3 int x and y and 0 because we are working in 2D. And as the value, we are going to pass the, the pixel state. If this is true, so we can use ternary operator question mark, we are going to pass tile. If not, we are going to pass null. This method will prepare our collider. We need to have another method to destroy a tile or a set of tiles inside our tile map. So let's create public void destroy collider. And here we are going to take a vector to origin. This will be in world space. So world space. We're going to take also a list of a vector to ints, and those will be affected pixel values. So 
uh, maybe let's call it affected tiles as offset. I need to import the system dot generic uh, collections dot generic library to use list, and now we can start writing this logic. First, we need to convert this origin to the tile space, so vector three int cell position or origin cell equals m underscore tile map world to cell and we are going to pass origin world space now that we have that we can loop for each of those vector to ints and just remove this value so for each vector to int cell in affected tiles as offset we need to con uh, calculate the position of the tile so vector 3 int tile position equals our origin cell plus the uh, cell value. I don't think we can do it this way. We need to convert it to vector 3 int. Lastly, we can call if m underscore tile map has tile, just to be safe that our tile map has this tile, tile position, we are going to set m underscore tile map dot set tile and we are going to set tile position to be null to remove this tile. Okay, this should give us a way to generate a single big collider for our map. Let's save the script, let's go back to Unity. We can drag our tile map collider generator onto our prefab, so the chunk tile map. If you are not uh, in it, let's just double click on it in the prefabs folder and let's drag our tile map collider generator onto this prefab. And we need to assign our tile map from this prefab here. And let's close this prefab. In the hierarchy, we also need to create a new empty game object. Let's call it grid. And we are going to reset its transform and add to it the grid component. We are going to next parent it to the terrain generator to prepare for the changes that we need to make inside the destructible terrain script. So let's open this script up. At the top, we need to add a few variables. So let's add a serialized field, and this will be private tile map collider generator. Let's call this, this m underscore collider generator. But we also need to have another private tile map collider generator, and this will be our m underscore non chunked collider. And we are going to assign it to an instance of this. This will be a prefab. Another variable that we need to have is a serialized field, and we need to add a private, and this will be grid, m underscore grid. And we will need to have a reference to the grid that we have created a moment ago. Next, let's go to the start method. First thing that we need to do is set the size of our grid cells. To do that, we need to copy the same line from the remove terrain at method. So let's copy this pixel size line and let's add it here in the start method. And we are going to call m underscore grid dot cell size equals, and this will be the new vector two, because we need to only set this on the X and Y. Uh, we are going to set the pixel size on both. So this will make each cell has have the same size as the pixel. With this prepared, we need to create our uh, tile map collider generator, but we need to spawn it at the bottom left corner of a texture, of our texture, because of how our collider generates the shape. We will need to have a vector to size equals m underscore modifiable texture dot sprite dot bounce dot size, which will give us the size of our sprite. Next, we are going to calculate the vector to bottom left corner local so local equals we will type here minus size multiplied by the m underscore modifiable texture and we are going to add to it with capital p pivot we do not have this property yet in the modifiable texture class we are going to add it the idea here is that if you select your sprite renderer the middle point is in the middle of the texture why is that well, if we select our map, we're going to see if we open the uh, sprite editor that the pivot is at the 0.5, so in the center. So here is where the sprite is placed or it shows 
based on this pivot so the center point is actually in the center of the texture. So we need to calculate the bottom corner of the texture. That's why we multiply the, the size with the minus times the pivot. So to know this offset from the center to the bottom corner, since we are talking about the local space. Now we need to convert this local space to world space. So vector two, bottom left world, it will be equal to m underscore sprite render since we have the reference to it, dot transform and transform point. This method will transform from local space to world space and we just need to pass the bottom left local position. And now we have the bottom left corner in the world space of our texture and we can instantiate m underscore non chunked collider equals instantiate and we are going to instantiate the m collider generator, so the prefab, at the bottom left world coordinates uh, position with the quaternion.identity and we are going to pass the fourth parameter, which will be our uh, m underscore grid dot transform. And I can actually move some of those parameters here so that it is all visible. And this will parent this uh, tilemap collider to be a child of the grid because this is how we can display our time up correctly. Lastly, let's call m underscore non chunked collider dot prepare collider. And here we need to pass the array of arrays of pixel states. And to do that, we are going to call it or create a method on the m underscore modifiable texture. Let's call dot get pixels state. And we do not have this method, so we need to right click, show context, and we are going to generate this method. But before we implement it, I'm going to go back to the destructible terrain, because to destroy the terrain, we need to go down to the remove terrain at method. And at the bottom, we are going to call m underscore non chunked collider, destroy dot destroy collider. And we are going to pass the, uh, this was a world position. And we need to pass the affected pixel as offset because this is basically the same as uh, modifying the texture. We get the offsets, we get the uh, position where we should start and we modify the tiles. Okay, with this done, let's save the script and we need to implement this uh, get pixel state method. So I'm going to go back to the modifiable texture class and here at the top, let's create public pivot uh, vector two pivot. And we are going to return the pivot that we have calculated here. And this pivot is normalized because we pass it here where we normalize the pivot. So it is between zero and one. Now let's scroll down to the get pixels state method. Here, what we need to get is the size of our texture. So int with equals our m underscore texture with int height equals m underscore texture dot height because we need to now unpack the color array that we can get. So data equals M underscore texture, and we can call get pixels. Now this will return an array of colors, but it will be a flattened array. So to convert it to a, a 2D array so that we can populate our bool values, let's prepare our array. So bool with two sets of square brackets, and we are going to call it uh, pixels equals new bool. And as the first argument, we are going to pass the height. Okay. And now we can create a for loop. And we are going to loop for i equals zero i less than height. And inside this loop, we are going to create pixels uh, with index i equals new bool of width. Now to convert one DI array to two DI array, we need to calculate the index of the server. So int row equals i multiplied by the width. Okay, with this, we can loop for j equals zero and j less than width. And we are going to set the pixels of i and j equals data with index row plus j. But this is a color. So we need to get the alpha value. So this is transparency. And we obviously need to know if the pixel is transparent. So it, if there is no pixel here or if there is a pixel. So we just can, uh, we can just check if this is greater than point half. 
this should give us a estimate if it is empty or not. With this done, let's just return our pixels. And this is how we are going to get the state of this texture. We can save this script and I believe we are ready to test. In the hierarchy, let's select the terrain generator and we need to add here the collider uh, generator. So this will be our prefab chunk tile map. And we are going to assign the grid reference. And this is it. Let's press play. If everything went well, we should have uh, the grid and the child of the grid should be a chunk tile map clone. And if we select it, and in the scene view, if we select this rendering mode, we should see the collider that appears at the same position as our map texture. Okay, now let's test if we can make holes. And let's click here on the map. And you should see, if we again go to the, this rendering mode, that all of those holes are showing. If we select the chunk tile map object, you should see it more clearly. And I th yeah, I think this is the best way to, to see it. So we can click on the in the game view and the holes are appearing. Now, if we select the stats window in the game view and if you start clicking this, you will see that the game slows down significantly. One simple solution would be to implement chunking. So to split the big collider into smaller ones so that we can modify only the ones that are actually affected by the explosion. I will try to implement this solution in the next video. Again, thanks to my patrons for supporting the channel.